<laughs> hey guys, it's Ed Bud here. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give the video a like and click the bell for notifications below. That's where new videos are launched. Today I've got an update vlog for you of my training over the past week. I say the past week, kind of every day is sort of the same now, isn't it? It's like a block of seven days. So I'm just gonna call every single day a day. But the sun's shining out there, I'll try and stay positive. I'm trying to keep up my fitness and pushing those blues to the side whilst not losing my mind. Training over the last week, I did a lot at pace actually. Eight miles in the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. Roughly seven minutes, two seconds per mile, coming in at 56 minutes, 31 seconds. So I knew I was getting close to 100 miles in the next percent, I wanted to just tip them over the balance. I've covered the wear quite extensively on the next percent at 100 miles in my previous video. I'll place a card for that up here somewhere uh, and also at the end of the video so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. The light nature and real propulsion of these shoes really does make it a real pleasure using these for training, I have to be honest. I know that a lot of people would call me crazy for doing that but hey, we live in different times right now. Certainly at that pace it would have been, you know, not far off my race pace really I guess at one point but certainly feel as if my fitness and training have raised up my ability somewhat and it just felt like a real pleasure hitting the eight miles in the next percent. I did forget to charge up that Polar OH1 heart rate strap that I've been using. It's a strap that you can use kind of up on the top of your arm here. I keep charging it, but it seems to be running dry. I don't know whether I'm forgetting to turn it off or I'm doing something wrong. If anybody else is using it out there and perhaps has encountered this same problem, please let me know in the comments. So heart rate data on that run really you couldn't read too much into it. The Apple Watch 2 that I've got, yeah, I know I need to upgrade it. Um, it just seems to produce some really weird stats, really weird readings at the start of the run. You get these kind of blocky areas, which uh, they just seem completely unnatural. I certainly wasn't struggling anywhere near as much in terms of heart rate as uh, the watch suggested. There's beautiful sunshine on that run. Temperatures around about 13 degrees centigrade, which is really beautiful, really quite mild. Although towards the end of the week, it was going to turn. The next day it was very apparent that we needed some supplies here at the house. We were kind of running a little bit low on vegetables and perishable sorts of things. So I used my run that day to collect some stuff from the pharmacy for my wife and then to hit the supermarket. I have to be honest, I did feel a bit odd kind of wearing my running gear while queuing up to get into the supermarket. I did get a few funny looks. I have noticed that people are kind of looking at people in this sort of weird way of, you know, have you got something wrong with you? Or are you, you know, if someone coughs, you know, everybody's sort of, oh no. I think we're all forgetting that there are lots of other illnesses, day-to-day -day things that people can get where you just have a cough and you sneeze. So I said I had to queue to get in the cinema. I wasn't, cinema, what? I said I had to queue to get into the supermarket, uh, but it wasn't for long, it only took a couple of minutes. And once I did get in there, I was greeted with the most amazing sight. I finally managed to get some eggs. I've been trying to get eggs for maybe about a week or so. I've been so pleased to see these scrumptious delights. So I ran with my Osprey Daylight Plus backpack. Um, so I'd filled that up completely with... Sh <laughs> I'd filled that up completely with shopping and then I had a further two carrier bags, one in each hand, and then I had to run home. I couldn't resist getting the things we needed though while they were there, while I was in the supermarket. I really didn't want to have to do more trips or unnecessary trips to the supermarket. So I tried running back, but it was very hard work in hot conditions. I'd suggest it was even harder than the workout the day before, the eight miles at you know just over seven minutes a mile. You realize just how important arm swing is when you're running with two carrier bags, so you just can't kind of mechanical momentum going. I think the Ultra Boost 20s didn't really help in that matter. They're quite a heavy shoe and by the end I just sort of collapsed into the door and I'd had enough. <laughs> I'd only done three miles but at least we've got the provisions so ah, it's all going wrong today. But at least we've got the provisions so that's one good thing. Another five mile blast in the next percent on Saturday. It was about six minutes 53 per mile. It's absolutely smashing it getting rid of all that sort of pent up aggression and irritation and frustration and all that bad stuff. Just saying, be gone, be gone, bad stuff. I'm gonna expel you from my head. I already turned on the turbo boosters, the turbines, the rockets, and the extra tins of baked beans to exercise away those corona based blues. Cadence was a little bit higher than the 166 steps per minute from the eight mile run a couple of days previous to that. Four of those five miles at threshold pace 
and then one which was literally just under which was on the turnaround around about 2.5 miles i noticed one of those miles was actually my 5k pace so i was really hammering it i think i just had a lot of energy that i just hadn't got rid of and i needed to get rid of it sadly again that polar sensor failed um, I put it on, there was just no life to it whatsoever. So no real reliable heart rate data from that run. Promising results though, and the legs are still feeling really fresh. I think I've been using the next percent quite a bit. And actually, I've noticed that even with the increased pace of some of the runs, uh, my legs still feel absolutely fine, feel really fit. Yeah, I've really reached that peak just in time for racing. Oh yeah, forgot about that. You do forget for a moment, don't you? You kind of wake up and go, hey, it's another day. Oh yeah. Got about that. On to the next day though. Kafuzi's quickly catching me up in terms of mileage on the Ultra Boost 20. And I noticed I'd hit the accelerator quite a bit over that last week, so I decided to get out for some more reasonably paced miles. I took a whole loop of the town. Uh, around about 7 minutes 45 per mile. Certainly a bit more of a conservative pace, really pulling the kind of pace down a little bit at times, just stopping to look at flowers and a squirrel. I even stopped to talk to the cows for a little bit. This is a strange shoe for me. Some days feels real good, but grow up, grow up, grow up. This is a strange shoe for me. Some days it feels real good, and other days it doesn't feel good. Some days comfortable and accommodating, and then other days clunky and bothersome. Now, there's lots of people that will say, Ed, you know, the Ultra Boost 20 is it's like a casual shoe. It's not a running shoe. This is quite a costly shoe. Um, I would suggest it's up there in terms of Adidas's running shoes, their running lineup. So I think you do need to consider it as a running shoe. And this one is certainly more of a running shoe than perhaps the Ultra Boost 18 was, for example, or the, the version 4. I think it was the V4 that was out in 2018. This session was a bit of a mixed bag, felt really good up to about three or four miles. Very enjoyable. And then the firm, well, certainly firm in comparison to some of the other shoes I've been testing recently. The nature of the boost material starts to feel a little bit too tough and far from forgiving in terms of the cushion to something like the Triumph 17. That Power Run Plus stuff is just superb. Or even the fresh foam that's in the 1080 V10 from New Balance. Hmm. But an enjoyable run nonetheless and got the mileage up to a weekly average that I would expect. Kicked off the week with five miles again at a similar pace, around about seven minutes 42, I think it was, per mile, five miles, 38 minutes 43. Bring the cadence down as well, just kind of enjoying being out there. I say that I was enjoying it. I was quite cold actually. Temperature had really come down from the previous day. I noticed on Strava, it's actually putting up your weather conditions at the time of that run, which is a very useful bit of data to have. You can see I've got some more consistent readings here from the Polar OH1. I just left it on charge like all night and it seemed to be fine after that. I'll throw up some previous data from the other runs so you can see the level of consistency that you can achieve with the OH1 when it is working. Certainly in comparison to my Apple Watch 2, you can just see those kind of jagged, kind of weird peaks that don't seem to add up. So you just need to remember to keep charging that thing up. It's almost like I'm getting a little bit OCD about it, I'm kind of charging it all the time, whenever I can. So in terms of the next block of seven days, or if you want to carry on calling them weeks, that's cool. I'm going to try and inject a little bit of speed work here and there. I'm really not sure that I want to go out and run like a half marathon time trial or anything. I know some people have recently. It just feels a bit weird for me to do that right now. I want to get out running. I've got other responsibilities that mean I need to make sure that the people I love and the people I care about, you know, they're the most important thing to me. And if I do go and run a really hard half marathon time trial, is that going to jeopardize my immune system? Is that going to bear me out too much? That's not important to me right now. I just want to keep my fitness up, keep getting some miles in, in the shoes that I love. So I don't know, I may do that. I'm really not feeling that it's the right thing to do right now though. Let's keep the old spirits up. Um, I do get this magazine, the uh, Runner's World, and it's a really important issue actually. They've done a whole issue about mental health um, in running and trying to sort of sustain that mental health, trying to improve our mental health. So do check that out. There's loads of really interesting articles in there. But as always, I really like the recipes. I'm so hungry all the time at the moment. I don't know if you guys have found that being stuck at home, but we're actually making better food using more vegetables, just generally eating better and looking after ourselves a little bit better. It wouldn't be an Ed Bug. Ed Bug? What? Who's he? Who's Ed Bug? Does anybody know? It wouldn't be an Ed Bug training vlog if we didn't have a musical interlude. So one of my favourite rock and roll artists, and I always call him a rock and roll artist because he was around that sort of 50s sun period, 
is Johnny Cash, and I really love both his San Quentin album and the Folsom album. In fact, the Folsom one is probably my favourite of all. I mean, you've got Folsom Prison Blues, I Still Miss Someone, 25 Minutes to Go, Orange Blossom Special, there's loads of great tunes on there. But my favourite of all has got to be The Wreck of Old 97. That is just a classic tune from the San Quentin album. It's just something great about the really sort of simple, no overdubs recording there. It's just as it was, you know, him with his group, with the backing singers playing, you know, for those inmates at the prison. Just really fantastic. If you haven't ever heard it, go and check out both those albums. Johnny Cash, live at Folsom Prison and live at San Quentin. It's time for me to mosey off and eat some Marmite on toast. Hope you're all staying safe out there, guys. Please look after you your families, look after the elders. If they're not able to go and get food and stuff and it's within the regulations, go and help them out. Check on your neighbors, make sure they're okay. Remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below. Please give the video a thumbs up and place your comments down below. Share the video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, I'll be seeing you.